Hello, I'm Claire and in this video I just want to show you how easy it is to make Halloween texture for any craft or other visual project that you might want to. What's more, we can do so in a free open source program called Krita. This version of Krita is I think 4.2 and I will put a link in the description below to where you can download the program for free and do exactly what we're about to do here. So here I'm just showing you what you might call uh, the finished background and it's going to be something that you can use in either orientation. So that's, it's doing it, it's doing it, yes there we go. It's It was vertical, now it's horizontal. You can use it both ways, so really versatile as well. However, in order to show you how to do it, I've got to close this uh, and I'm just going to save that and there we go and what we're going to do first there are two stages to this process first of all we have to make the sort of orange and white background almost smoky clouds texture and then the grunge edging but they're both very easy and so without further ado let's start on the orange cloud texture I'm clicking on new file and for this we want to make quite a small file. Now I always make these uh, texture files too big. I kind of forget that they don't need to be that big. Um, there's also the issue that you've got to be able to see what I'm doing. So six by six inches, it's probably going to tell me it's too big but it can work all of that out so don't worry I'm just making a nice square from which we can do the orange and white texture. Now the orange and white texture will in fact, I'm just going down here to reduce the size of, of the square here, what we've got here is a plain white square, couldn't be plainer, okay? And the thing with Krita, never work on the first layer because you won't be able to separate what you do very easily if you do. Easy though to create another one, you just click on the plus sign here and we're about to make a texture. Now this, by the by, this texture procedure will also work for all sorts of other things like skies and it will in fact be seamless but because we're going to have the, the black grungy edging around the edge you're not necessarily going to see that it's seamless so much. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle anymore, we're just going to make this texture. I've already selected up here on colour the orange, I'm going for a nice sort of bright orange Halloween-y colour. The brush I'm using, let's go to brush presets, yeah, so if you go to brush presets, textures and texture big, that will give you the kind of texture to make the sky we saw. So all I'm going to do is just stamp this orangey texture all over. I'm clicking once with it, not even with a graphics pen, with a mouse. I'm clicking once all over here, all over here to create a sort of mottledy orange and white texture. And now, but you say, how can this be seamless, you say, and how do I know? That's a very good question. So let's have a look up here. If I click on the view menu, and we're going to go to a wraparound mode, you can in fact see that we can still see the edges of stuff here. I'm going to reduce the brush size a little bit. Um, because we only need to fill in small bits here just to get rid of some of these cornery bits. What the wraparound mode has done is to put the main square that we started with in the middle here and you can see all the surrounding squares and what they will look like. As I say for this particular project you don't particularly even need to hide the edges but it's just nice to be able to do that for sake of completeness and all of that. And so now we have a texture where it's really hard to see where the original square tile was and that's exactly what you're aiming for. So up to view again, we no longer need the wraparound mode, we've got to get our tile back so I'm going to unselect the wraparound mode and this is our basic background tile. Now to add to, to add this tile to the patterns in Krita so it can be there forever and all time if you want it, up here uh, on the uh, the sort of icons version of the menu bar 
this piece, this square here, it won't be always showing this pattern, it could be showing the last pattern you put in there. In this case, it's showing one of the default patterns. But that, yeah, there we go. As the arrow says, fill patterns. You click on it and go to custom pattern. And it's shown, it, it knows full well we've just created this. And as usual for me, it says, the current image is too big to create a pattern. The pattern will be scaled down. If that happens to you, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. It will still work. Just click use as pattern and make sure you've got entire image selected there. Okay. Use as pattern. Now we can have that as our pattern. There is something else you can do if you want to. And, and, and I've, I've put this safely in as a pattern to use as pattern and I'm going to click away. However, it just occurs to me at this point, it's a good point to show you that if you wanted, you can also, supposing you thought you'd put too much orange there, we might or might not have done, I don't know yet, but if you had, all you do, here's your orange on the layer, opacity, that is how much white shows through, how much color shows through, is here, and if I reduce that, See, it will make a much more muted version of the orange. So if you decided you wanted that, that's all you'd have to do. As it goes, I'm going to put it right back up to 100% and work with it like that because it's got that good fiery colour for Halloween. And of course, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could add extra fiery colours here by stamping over with a yellow and a bit of a dark red or whatever. Not going to do that. Keeping it simple, we have our tile and it's up in the patterns. That's the end of stage one. So stage two, I'm just, I'm just in fact going to close this. Uh, we don't need that actually because we've saved this as a pattern. It actually says few because yes, it is still up there. Stage two is to create the the full page so we've got a proper Halloween-y background. And so the way to the way to start stage two, go to file, oh, oh, indeed you don't need to, go here more easily to new file, click on it and now I like to work and apologies to people who aren't using the um, European paper system but I like to work in a size that I recognize from it coming up the printer because then I know that what's going on is going on. So I personally, I like using A4 because I'm very familiar with that size. It's a standard size in Europe. If the size that you are familiar with is US letter, for example, use that one because then you'll know the shape and size you're gonna end up with. Anyway, I'm so I'm gonna click on A4 here. Um, if you're wanting to print this out, that 300 PPI is what it needs to say. If you're not gonna print it out and you're gonna use it on the web, it doesn't matter. Anyway. That's the, the size of document we're creating. I'm clicking create. Yes, and it's done it. And so here we have the A4 file. Now here's the background again, not as a matter of good practice, I'm not gonna use that layer. I'm gonna create another one. And we want to fill it with pattern. Now up here, the pattern we just created is safely stowed. So I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to click on fill with pattern and it automatically goes to the last pattern created, which is this, the one we've just done, the orange smoke, which is exactly what you want. Um, if that was, wasn't the case, then you'd have to go to whichever, wherever the pattern was hanging out and select another one. But we don't have to worry about that because our custom one is there. So the basic background of our document is done. And now it's, we just need to add the grungy edging, which is both easy and fun. Watch this. New layer, changing my color to black, changing my brush to texture crackles. By the way, these the, this is only using two brushes, the texture we, brush we used for the last one and this crackly one. They both come with, or well, they came with my version of Krita. I didn't add them, I didn't get them from, any, from anywhere. They're just there, so they're just there for you to use too. Um, texture crackles. And let's see what the largest size of brush, brush sizes up here. Let's see what that does. All I'm gonna do is stamp this around the side. Again, 
using a mouse, you don't need a graphics pen. It, I'm just going click once, click, click. I clicked over it because I couldn't resist it, but let's try and do one layer and see what one layer looks like. And don't be too uniform about it. This is quite grungy. See how it gives that lovely smoky or branchy look of things coming off here, getting some good grunge. Just a bit random, as random as you dare. Um, and some of them can stick out more and some of them can stick out less. So they're like branches on a really gnarled and perhaps scary tree. How can a tree be scary? But you know, it looks like it's pointing fingers into the sky. Very Halloween-y. Anyway, um, I'm going to go around again just to make it a bit blacker, darker, grungier. You, of course, can stop wherever feels good to you with this, however dark or not dark you want it to be. And I'm just going to keep clicking around here. Click, 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 single clicks. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm using um, just a left mouse click. Um, I think it's even, I, I don't use Macs very much. It's, it's an even simpler click, I believe. It's just the simplest click you can do all the way around here and just adding in some extra bits. Now, I'm going to be a bit careful, but I've discovered from doing this before, you've got to be a bit careful on the corners because things get can look a bit lopsided. But that looks good from this angle. But remember we swizzled it around before. Let's swizzle it around again and see what it looks like if you were to use it horizontally in a project. Clicking on image and rotate. And well, that, let's, it doesn't really matter which way it rotates, I guess, because either way. Um, that's that's pretty much pretty good. I'm happy with that. If you weren't happy with that, it would be very easy to go to the erasers here. We're going to brush presets and now erasers. I recommend the soft brush or the small brush if you just want to make small changes. And of course, if you wanted to have tinier pieces of grunge, you could also change the size of the erasers and the grunge brush up here. So there's loads you could do. But if you are happy with that like that, then there's very little else to do. An extra flourish if you want to, not required, but if you want to, is if you click on this layer two here, and you might want to change the way in which it blends with this orange layer beneath it, the way in which the grunge sort of shows up against the orange. That's quite fancy. If you really want to do that with a blend mode, the blend modes in Krita are up here. And instead of being normal, I will admit this is one I did earlier. And in the darken menu, which sounds doesn't appropriate for Halloween, easy burn also sounds pretty appropriate for Halloween. But if you tick that, it just makes it stand out very slightly more against the orange. No need to do that particularly. The final thing to get this out and into the world in the way you want, um, obviously you've got to save it. Now, Krita has its own sort of proprietary format in which it, actually not proprietary, but its own special format in which it saves files. Um, and you probably want to save it as a Krita. And I, I apologize if I'm calling it Krita when it should be Krita or Krita when it should be Krita. People seem to pronounce this word Krita here in all sorts of ways. If anybody knows what's definitive, please do let me know. Anyway, a Krita document will give you access to all the different layers, all the different pieces that you need um, anytime you want to. So it's a sensible, sensible thing to do to save it like this. I already have one here from the one that I practiced with, um, so I'm not going to save it. But if you were to, you'd save it like that. Now, that's all well and good, you might say, but it doesn't give me a PNG or a JPEG that I can use for my projects. Absolutely not. And in order to get a JPEG that you'd use in normal graphics projects. You go file again, but you go export. And it gives you a dizzying array of formats to which you can export, one of which is good old JPEG. If in doubt, JPEG for this, it should print well, would look good. Um, so just, I'm just going to call this Halloween. And by saving that, and clicking on all the OKs, you have a Halloween background for your projects. Thanks ever so much. That's the end of this recording. Thank you for listening and have a great day.